Hi there, welcome back. Video number three. Uh, today I'm going to talk about... Um, I keep going through the signal chain in the Maplin. Last time I talked about the power supply. Today I'm going to talk about the keyboard and the keyboard controller and uh, issues I've had with getting the synth in tune and stuff like that. So uh, I hope you enjoy this little uh, look at the keyboard and the keyboard controller in the Maplin. So, very welcome. Okay, welcome back. I showed you briefly in the first uh, video that um, I have done some work to the keyboard. If I remove this. A lot of you had had problems with the keyboard that it stopped triggering properly. Uh, and so did I. So as you can see, I've removed uh, the original switches. And instead I've installed these micro switches. Uh, I'll probably insert a little video here from when I made this. I have a CNC router that I made this on. Um, I paid about a euro a piece for the switches and then I had some scrap wood that I put together. Uh, as a consequence you can see I had to move the uh, digital part of the keyboard controller here. I had to recess it a little. I had to make a, a little outtake here so, so that uh, key, uh, the yeah, uh, so this can be pushed in underneath here. Uh, so this has uh, really improved the, the triggering and the rel reliability of the, uh, of the um, uh, keyboard. So, uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, another thing I did here, uh, you know from when you, you try and tune the synth, you have to move this top cable all the time and re-solder it or whatever. So one simple trick was just to put this on here and now I can uh, move it to any, any one of these pins here and I can I have the top, top key to trigger them. Uh, but it makes it much quicker when you need to uh, adjust the keyboard. Another thing I did was over here you can see that I I put a lowest note. This goes to the lowest uh, C on the on, on the controller there. Uh, and now I can and it also shows me the the gate when the gate is on. But especially with sound effects and stuff, uh, it, it can be useful to be able to uh, press the lowest note. But it's also a low, low C, and if you have a sound that glides or something, you can have it glide down to the lowest C. So that's an easy modification. And while we're still in this area, you can see, I'll remove this. This is a little thingy I made. It's just a piece of oak, and this foam protects the pins from falling out. I used to have 40 of them, but now I, I've lost a few. Anyway, uh, for a while there, before I had, when I tried to uh, implement MIDI on the synth, before I had this Kenton or any other interface, uh, 
I attempted to just use the exponential converter, uh, but it was uh, it was not a good solution because uh, uh, I I didn't really get close. But but you know, uh, in order to use the exponential converter, uh, you have to adjust these two trimmers. So I moved them up here to a more accessible point, so they they were more easier to work on. Uh, and then on the other side. The actual keyboard controller, of course, is, is the circuit board that is inside here, this one. Uh, and originally uh, it has a, a bunch of uh, uh, potentiometers on it, that, or rather trimmers, that you have to adjust while you tune the synth. Uh, but that was such a pain in the butt to reach and also only having those regular trimmers. So quite soon I rep replaced them with these precision uh, pots instead. Uh, so here I can reach them much easier and I can adjust the partial notes much easier. And you also see uh, you have these LEDs that indicate which key is pressed. Uh, the Maplum was prepared for uh, an external sequencer. Uh, I'm not sure whether it was ever released, but I know uh, some there, there have been Arduino versions made and stuff like that. But um, the keyboard controller here works a little backwards because the active voltage is actually the, uh, from the LEDs that are turned off. Uh, and as you know, the, uh, the Maplin doesn't follow, follow the regular standard as far as tuning. Nowadays, it's, uh, the most popular standard is having one um, volt per octave. So say if you had one volt here, it would be two there and three there and so forth. Uh, the Maplin, on the other hand, the, the very highest note, the one that's not hooked up here, but uh, the highest D, uh, is roughly at 5 volts, so the uh, D below it is at half that, so it's 2.5, and, and then half again, 125, then half again, uh, 0.67, and uh, 33, and whatnot. Uh, so it has this standard called Hertz per volt, uh, per octave. Um, and there are pros and cons with both systems. This is a more unusual system. But the co a consequence here is that the digital conversion here means that there are uh, six voltages that are piled on top of each other. So if you have a key that has many of the LEDs turned off, then there's a bigger risk that the uh, possible errors on each separate voltage uh, they get compiled, uh, so uh, my my Maplin is in fairly good shape as far as tuning, but it's definitely not perfect. Uh, but having uh, uh, keys that have several voltages involved at the same time, that is a, a big risk, <laughs> uh, like this one. Uh, but um, as far as you know what's going on, then you, then you can work around it. But anyway, this is something I recommend. Uh, move the pot potentiometers, put these preci precision trimmers in instead. It's easier to reach, a uh, lot less swearing, uh, and it's with the precision trimmers it's easier to get, uh, to get where you're going faster. Okay, I think I'll stop there. Okay, on this next sound, I attempted to make uh, something percussive. So I've mixed uh, uh, noise, of course, and I have the control signals going through mixers one and two. I have uh, transient B, and I mix it with uh, the key um, key modulate signal. So I get. Uh, uh, so the filters follow the uh, the keys, and 
it sounds kind of cheesy, but uh, sampling this type of sounds and, and putting them in a proper drum machine and stuff, I think can be pretty useful. That's about it.